Now to the message, run, good luck, run. According to this day newspaper, that's the message that's starting to resonate across parts of Nigeria, particularly the North, asking former President Goodluck Jonathan to seek a second mandate. They argue that he's got experience as well as energy, hindsight, foresight and drive. But given the fact that Mr. Jonathan has already tilled that political garden before his campaign faltered and he stuttered out of office, why would he want to go it again? Or perhaps the question should be, why wouldn't he in a country where former heads of state have returned and achieved electoral success? But why is the North tying its leadership aspirations to former President Jonathan? What could be in it for the region beyond showing general disgruntlement with the Tinubu administration, who they appear to hold responsible for the current hardship in Nigeria? Well, for their perspective on this and the other issues of the day, I'm joined now in the studio by the current affairs analyst and dean of the School of Postgraduate Studies at Bayes University, Abuja, Professor Abiodun Adeniyi, and by the policy strategist and group CEO of the global investment and trade company, Baba Yusuf, who's also a special economic zones expert. And the reason we brought that up will be apparent shortly. Um, I'm going to come to you in a minute, but let me start with you, um, Prof. Um, yeah. The issue, this is an issue of domestic politics. Yeah. Um, and the story in this day newspaper, which I believe you've seen, suggesting that the North is trying to draft President Jonathan in as a candidate in the 2027 presidential election. I'm wondering why the North, obviously we'll talk to you because you're from, <laughs> you're from the North. But let me get his, you know, perspective first. Oh, I'm wondering why the North is trying or tying its leadership aspirations to former President Jonathan. What are your thoughts? Well, I think Charles, I think it's very interesting interesting development and it's also good for us to break things down first mm. you know when we talk about the north you know we have to uh, put things in con in contest you know recent politics uh, is beginning to show us that the north is not necessarily mm. uh, the monolithic north that we used to talk about those days you know if we're talking about the north we're probably talking about the northwest the north and northeast yeah. because they are very As potent the north central north central because yeah. they're very potent in terms of their politics mm. and in terms of their ability to determine who leads this country and again, if we are talking about the northeast and the northwest, then who, who are the individuals, you know, who are projecting this um, this development? Mm. You know, um, maybe one or two individuals who are probably influential, maybe governors. And of course, the reason is very obvious. Perhaps they want to show their disaffection with President Tinubu. And of course, they belong to the other party, other than uh, other parties other than the APC. Mm. You know, and they are thinking about how they are pro probably leverage on the status. Of the president or former president Jonathan, mm. not necessarily because they like President Jonathan as a person, but because they know that he can still become president, and because in the past he he's, he cannot probably run more than once anymore. If another candidate is going to be brought up That's to challenge, that yeah. to be brought up to challenge President they Tinubu, want two terms. they will want two terms definitely, <laughs> yeah. irrespective of the promise that they will give. So President Jonathan is looking suitable, uh, you know, for uh, the planners, mm. as it were, you know, and of course. Um, it also tells us that, you know, thinking, you know, arrive in the build up to the 2027 uh, presidential election. Ordinarily, you want to say that it's not too early in the day for us to be talking about 2027, but this is politics, this is Nigeria, you know, you cannot uh, necessarily fix, you cannot necessarily periodize things, you mm. know. Um, political horse trading back and forth um, is right now, it's gradually. Uh, beginning and things are running fast. So it's right. okay if they start uh, the permutation, but we need to understand the context in which um, the agitators, you know, are operating from. First, like I said, you know, break down the north, you know, come down to the individuals who are interested. Then second, think about the person, the identity, the, stat the statutory identity of President Jonathan. Mm -hmm. Don't necessarily uh, President Jonathan as a person, but if the fact that he's been president before and he may not necessarily be sworn in um, you cannot necessarily run more than once. But let's also remember that... That's briefly. An, sorry, yeah, briefly. Yeah. Sorry. But there's an underlying controversy around President Jonathan again, you know. I remember when he wanted to contest a few years ago, mm. uh, two senior ad advocates, you know, collided, you know. I remember Femi Fallon or SAN said he cannot be sworn in a third term. 
you know, and of course Michael Ozekome, SAN as well, yes. also countered. So it could potentially and, be countered. Yeah, I said it can And be it might end up in court. Yeah, so we, it's, it's just going to be a, a, a lot more back and forth. Right. And it's, um, it's, yeah, that, it's those are good points to really. bring up. Yeah. Uh, Baba Yusuf, let us assume that he's going to run. I mean, that's an assumption, obviously, because, I mean, we don't know whether he wants to or not. But we saw the level of disgruntlement that manifested in the North during the recent end bad governance protest. Is all that tied to this attempt to hold the Tinubu administration responsible for the current level of hardship in Nigeria, which appears to be hitting the North harder than other parts of the country? Is this a sort of grudge match to say, well, you know, we're going to punish you for this by coming up with somebody or, I mean, what, what's the idea behind this? And what are you hearing? Because, I mean, you're, you're in the sort of upper echelons of, uh, <laughs> of political and traditional circles in the North. Thank you very much, Charles. Yeah, to an extent, yes, but I think um, that is n just a by the way. I mm. think uh, I would speak to the political dynamics. Uh, traditionally, one year has passed since a new administration. We are building to the next administration. So the political gladiators are beginning to, you know, go on to what you call in strategy their master plan, to start mm. building the master plan. And we heard some voices, if you recall, three, four weeks ago, you know, and talking about potentially coming together with a view to getting a veritable opposition uh, person to contest 2027, mm. potentially against President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Of course, the agitations, you know, ongoing even before the end bad governance, and the potentially what will come in the future, especially with regards to the feedback given by the handlers of Mr. President, mm. is given reason why people are beginning to think of alternatives Charles, because to be honest, in the last one year, the opposition has been in tatters. Mm. We have not had any constructive engagement. So complacency has set in, in the administration, sense of entitlement and the way they insult people, because there is no veritable opposition. So to me, it's a welcome development so that uh, the government in power will wake up and recognize that eight, nine, 10, 15 years ago, they mm. were in the trenches, you know, challenging the government in power. Uh, with regard to Jonathan, president, former President Jonathan also, I think uh, to add to what Prof said, the, for those that are, you know, that want the balance and the unity, to promote balance and unity, which I spoke to about in my broadcast to Nigerians last week, that power will certainly have to stay in the South in 2027. Mm. For those that want to demonstrate that unity, you know, should prevail in this country. Uh, no apologies to those that say, power has to go back to the north because as far as I'm concerned, like I always say, politicians are same actors, different costumes. Mm. That being said, so far, pres former President Jonathan stands heads above shoulders, you know, against any other person for now in terms of pedigree and experience, you know, to come and say maybe for a political party to contest. Of course, let us not forget, we have a Peter Obi factor right there. Mm. And 2027, I think, is something very interesting to watch. So the emergence of this conversation also, for those that understand politics, presupposes that this conversation has gone further than what we are seeing, you know, in the public domain. So it's game on, as far as I'm concerned. Well, that's very interesting. And let's leave it at that, because um, we've got other things to talk about, mm -hmm. unless you have something you're desperately trying to no, add no, to it. So, so l l let me move on to the next thing, which is the seizure of the Nigerian presidential jets for a breach of contract. Yes. Um, the Nigerian government argues that the Chinese firm, which alleges this breach of contract, has um, no right to tamper with federal government property and has an agreement with Ogun State. Um, and the issue revolves around a free trade zone. I'm going to come to you about that. That's one of the reasons we mentioned in your intro, because you're very familiar with it. Um, but what, are you, what, are you, what is your thinking on this, Prof? Well, I think generally, each time countries of the South or developing countries, you know, go into agreement, you know, with countries of the North or developed countries, you know, sophisticated countries, which we often do, uh, which we understand that as a subtest, you know, of um, uh, the fact that we're not strong enough, you know, we're at liberty, we're at their mercy. At some point, we're going to be obligated to them. 
in the, within those agreements, there's often a devil in those details, you know. Um, we cannot negotiate with them, we cannot deal with them on equal terms, you know. At some point, you know, they can turn uh, things around us. Unfortunately, maybe China, those days, would not be classified as, as a country in the north, but it has emerged and become a very powerful country, which is why, in many regards, they are very, very helpful. That's one point. So I'm not surprised that this kind of development is coming. But again, I've read, I've tried to read as much as possible around this controversy, and I think I want to believe to a very large extent, you know, the testimony or the, the details volunteered by former governor, Bikuli Amosu. You know, it was very, very detailed and it took some decisions. Sometimes you take some decisions as honestly as possible, but somebody who is mischievous may, not, may just want to turn it around, you know, to hurt you. That's what I see. Yeah, but there's, there's an agreement. <laughs> no, no, no. There's that, a contract. There's a contract. And the contract yeah. spells out the terms. You know, I, but of the it was agreement. stated that he, the, the, the contractor, you know, um, that is now doing this against us was supposed to be an interim manager. You know, and of course, contracts are not necessarily cast in stone. At some point, of course, it can be terminated, subject to um, agreements. You know, yeah, subject, to you, subject to you to meeting the, the conditions of, the of yeah, yeah, subject to you meeting the conditions of the termination. Right. So that this is what happened, and I'm, I believe that whatever happens at the end of the day, um, first, um, the contractors or the Chinese firm went too far, and I, I do I do not believe that they are, that they are not doing this to us because we are Nigeria. You know, a developing country with problematic perception um, in the world at large. And maybe overall, I also believe that it can be resolved, you know, through diplomat diplomatic means. And going by the account of former Governor Amosu, if we get the support of the Chinese government and the province in China, you know, that, that testified against them, mm. you know, in any court of law, I think that we might be able to turn the table against them. Right. Okay. Let, let me come to you, Baba Yusuf, because... Mm -hmm. Um, your, your, your thoughts are particularly relevant um, because this ar revolves around a free trade zone. Um, I mean, the contractual agreement of which you were are very familiar with because you were the first substantive MD and CEO of the first airport free trade zone in Nigeria. Given that clearly well-informed background, what do you think of the seizure of the Nigerian presidential jets? Thank you very much for calling me to speak about this topic because it's very important to mm. me, Charles. And by the way, to add to that, what you, which you said to, to, so that we can speak to the issues, I'm also a member of the World Free Trade Zone Organization, mm. so we understand also the international dimension to this. It's a very sad and embarrassing situation we find ourselves, Charles. And that is the problem that we keep on creating. And some of us spoke to these issues a couple of years ago. And we run into, into issues because people, you know, people don't want to hear the truth. And those truths we were talking about five, six years ago are manifesting in the case of Ogun. And I would like the federal government, I will seize this opportunity to call on Mr. President to reevaluate all our special economic zones agreements where we have mostly handshaking with international you know, mm. investors, not just Chinese. Now, speaking to this particular issue, the, I, I, I listened and I read, and of course, before it blew up, I was following very carefully because within the international circle of special economic zones, all these conversations was actually going on. And that is why it's pathetic. Mm. I'm sorry I have to use the word pathetic. We sat on our hands, Charles, for almost, what, 10, 15 years? When this thing was snowballing into a combustible issue that you know, you know, blew up on our face. Like you rightly said, there is a subsistence agreement. And what makes this case a bit different is because it is also a, an agreement that is leaning on a bilateral agreement between China and Nigeria that was signed up in 2001. You know, that gives provisos. Now, the issue with due respect to, uh, to Governor Amosu, he confessed to have made a mistake, and that is where I will start from, fundamentally. How come we did not undertake due diligence before a governor signed up, mm. you know, not just Ogun state assets, but the territorial integrity of our country? And this has become a corporate culture in corporate Nigeria. I thought that the first thing to do is to go through the details of that agreement, one, and to do what you call, you know, engagement with the critical stakeholders too, because there are two layers of engagement. And with regards to those that are saying, yes, we can yank it off, you can't yank it off. Mm. 
in international, uh, you know, agreements, even within Nigeria. You're bound by the agreement. And uh, more, more importantly, you have rules of engagement. <laughs> One day is penalty clause, two days exit clause. Yeah. How did we get ourselves into this? And when and if an executive governor, without prejudice to his reason, decides to do that, why didn't we go to the sequence of the rules of engagement so that we protect the asset of this country? Mm -hmm. But it appears it was a political decision. That being said now, we have found ourselves, because even when the matter went to the U.S. and went to the U.K., and we still had an opportunity to go and engage and stop this process, but we didn't. And these people now leaned on it. Of course, I'm not supporting the taking over of our, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the presidential uh, fleet. But I think also part of the problem is we go into this engagement without strategy. Mm. People say I sound like a broken worker, but anything without strategy is kaput. Why am I saying so? You yeah, are dealing briefly, with, so you are dealing with the Chinese yeah. Yeah. who come to you with a master plan to ensure that they protect their own investment. Why didn't you do the same? I think what they did is to play this hand to push us to the wall so that we can react. And at the end of the day, now they have forced us to a negotiation table so that we can have a conversation for them to have an exit. Right. I believe that is what they have done. Right. And I hope government will engage constructively without sense of They basically want to be paid the compensation. Absolutely. For, for and we happened. should engage them because it is already right. having a ripple effect on our FDI engagements, yeah. which I'll speak about later. Right. Well, I mean... Prof, the, mm. the, the, there are two things here. I mean, number one, I, I think you kind of touched on this at the mm. outset. The assets they've seized don't mm. belong to a good state. Yeah. Um, okay. So you, you have to wonder what the basis was for a French court order, um, you know, for the seizure of the presidential jets. Um, the other thing was that, is that I think Baba Yusuf touched on this. This could obviously really give Nigeria a bad name Definitely. with foreign investors mm. and scare them all away. Yeah, unfortunately. But it also tells us that these fellows can be very, very vicious. And we have a lot with that we are doing with them. You know, it's, it's a lesson for us to be very careful. Mm. And overall, if you look at the history of uh, partnership with foreign countries, you will see that without necessarily uh, being biased towards West, you see that uh, the West are much more considerate than some of these Eastern countries. You know, we, if you hear what Chinese you know, have done in Zambia or Zimbabwe, yeah taking over our assets and it's like more brutish very <laughs> brutal and, and maybe we should be very careful yeah. um, going forward and of course we should also learn our lessons you know in the area of um, knowing that in business in transactions there are, there was, there's probably nothing like emotions or sentiments you know and these guys are very litigious you know they are very ready all any time um, you know to take us to court uh, you know and strangulate us as much as possible mm cause us further embarrassment, you know, irrespective of the ones we are already suffering. You look at this company, for instance. Before they succeeded in France, they were in the United States. They were in the United Kingdom. So they, they were over, all over the world, you know, waiting for, uh, you know, choice assets. And they know the implication of uh, an aircraft, for instance. And they got it at the end of the day. But, like I said earlier, I'm very hopeful that um, if the government, like I believe, if they know their onions, I'm mm -hmm. sure um, we can remedy this situation. On that note, I'm really sorry we're out of time. Um, it's always, uh, you know, it's, it's, you guys have so much to say, and yeah. it's just so illuminating having a chat Thank with you. you. But Professor Abiodun Adeni is a current affairs analyst, dean of the School of Postgraduate Studies at Bayes University, Abuja. And, of course, Baba Yusuf is a policy strategist, group CEO of the Global Investment and Trade Company, and a special economic zones expert. Thank you very much Thank indeed. You. That's it for this edition of Arise Prime Time. Join us again tomorrow. From me and the entire team here in Abuja, bye-bye and thank you for watching.